Hey, what's going on everybody? Gareth Foley here with FCP Euro. Today we're going to be talking about some of the really common problems on the uh, E9X range of 3 series. This also applies to the E82 and E88 1 series. So we're primarily going to be talking about suspension related problems on these cars and uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. Matter, All right, so starting here at the uh, front of our example E92 behind us, um, honestly, just like most BMWs, one of the most common problems you're gonna find with these cars with age is worn struts, worn control arms, and worn tie rods. There are technically three different styles of control arms that could potentially be installed on these cars. Um, if you have an X-Drive car, your entire front suspension is gonna be steel, so you're gonna have cast steel control arms. This is a thrust arm as an example. Um, really, the only thing that's gonna go wrong on these is the inner thrust bushing, which is hydraulically filled. Once these things fail, it's pretty much replacing the control arm. And you also notice that the ball joint is separate from the control arm itself. Uh, the ball joint is actually bolted to the knuckle as opposed to being part of the control arm itself, like in the rear wheel drive variants. What we have here is a standard rear wheel drive thrust arm. Same thing, hydraulically filled rubber bushing. So once these fail, you get a lot of play and a lot of slop in the front suspension. You'll probably hear a lot of knocking noises as you're driving down the road. One of the popular modifications on the rear wheel drive uh, versions of these cars is to install the M3 components. So this is an M3 thrust arm, uses solid rubber bushing. And um, other than that, that's really primarily the only difference on the thrust arm itself. So. A little bit more of a durable bushing. Doesn't change anything on the alignment side of things, at least not this control arm. This is less likely to uh, fail in the same way that the stock control arm would. Moving kind of over here to the uh, wishbones. These are the rearward arms on the rear wheel drive cars. Um, this is your standard wishbone. Most common weak point on these is gonna be the ball joint. Ball joint will typically wear out before the bushing ever does, although it is possible for the bushing itself to wear. Uh, this is the M3 equivalent, so again, this is only going to fit the rear-wheel drive cars. It uses a spherical inner joint, so this is more durable, but it also allows for free movement of the suspension without any kind of binding. Um, same thing on this, ball joints will typically wear out, but the one difference on this uh, control arm versus this is this will actually give you slightly increased front wheel camber. You know, both of these control arms are a huge upgrade on the rear-wheel drive platforms. Uh, a couple other common weak points, your sway bar links. Typically, uh, these are overlooked, but when they wear out, they'll get really loose and you'll hear like a clicking sound. That's usually play in these ball joints. If you're replacing any of the control arms in the front suspension, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and throw new ones in. These are relatively cheap. We have here is a factory strut. What's interesting is on the Sox factory struts, they use something uh, called a stop buffer, which is basically a rebound damper. It's essentially like an internal bump stop that prevents the shock from rebounding too quickly or bottoming out coming up. So you'll notice that this piston shaft is extremely short. Um, I'll just pull on it and you can see that it's coming out a little bit. This is totally normal. We actually have it marked on the website which struts are affected by this design. Essentially to install the spring on one of these, you have to compress the spring extra, extra tight before you put the strut mount on. You would, you would really wanna use a wall mounted or proper spring compressor to install these uh, factory front struts, your Bilstein B4s don't have it, uh, the yellow bodies don't have it from Bilstein. Those are some of the other options that are available. And obviously if you're going to coilovers, which is another common upgrade that you could do to these cars, you're removing this equation altogether, but most people end up putting stock equipment back on the car. And that's one thing to be aware of on the design of these factory dampers when you're ordering these struts. And then of course, last but not least, your tie rod. Uh, this connects the steering rack to the knuckle, and this is what allows you to set uh, your front toe adjustment in your, in, in your alignment. Uh, any kind of play within the inner joint here or the outer joint here will have a negative effect on how accurate your alignment is, which could therefore negatively affect not only the way that the car drives, but uh, could also negatively affect your tire wear. So it's always good to keep your eye out for any potential wear on these. You'll normally get a little bit of slop, and we'll kind of show you how to check for those and what to look for. So we'll kind of go underneath the car and point some of the stuff out. So, underneath the front of the car here, you've got the classic 
three and nine shake and 12 and six shake. And that's basically trying to find play in the front wheel bearings or see if there's any play within the uh, control arms themselves or ball joints. Obviously it's a little high right now, but I can still leverage it here. So right there, I feel like a little bit of play seems to be coming from the strut actually. Like there's a little bit of play in the shock shaft. And then back and forth like this, we'll test the ball joints. You know, this will give you any kind of play from the control arm bushings themselves or the tie rod and uh, this will help you feel any play in the ball joints or wheel bearing. Everything feels pretty tight for the most part, so no real concerns there. If you did feel some looseness or some loud clunking, you would need to isolate it to just the wheel bearing, which you know could develop a little bit of play or it could be any of these ball joints in here. Uh, but this is the rear wheel drive setup in the front. Uh, so you have your tension strut, your lower wishbone and your tie rod. So this is a BMW multi-link front suspension. So on this, we have just the regular factory control arms on here. So it's gonna be the liquid filled thrust arm and it's gonna be the standard lower wishbone. Uh, so a couple things to look for. Like I said, this thrust arm has a hydro filled bushing. So it's actually filled with oil. If this were cracked and you caught it earlier enough, you would actually see a bunch of oil leaking from this area. And if it was really bad, you can kind of come over here with a pry bar and you can see how much side to side you can get. Or if you came in from behind, I don't want to take the splash shield off of this video, but if there's a lot of slop on it and you put a pry bar in from behind, you would actually get this motion here. So if this bushing was extremely worn out, there'd be a lot of play around this point. As you're driving down the road, uh, this control arm is keeping this entire front wheel located inside the wheel well. So uh, this is resisting all the, all the rearward forces as you're traveling straight. Any play within this bushing here is gonna be extremely notable. Uh, you could get uh, some shimmying about 50 to 60 miles an hour or um, some nasty vibration under braking. Wishbone here, which is this lower straight arm, looking kind of for the same thing here. This is just a solid rubber bushing. So you typically don't get any kind of major play in there. Like a little bit like that is gonna be normal. If this whole bushing was like cracked around here or the metal sleeve inside is somehow separated from the rest of the bushing, uh, this will be able to go back and forth like that and it would be notable right away. All these ball joints are sealed from the factory, so they're not greasable, they're not serviceable. You would be looking for any kind of damage uh, on the ball joint boots themselves, if there's any tears, if there's any grease coming out. And actually um, back here on the wishbone ball joint, you can just see right there, there's a little crack in the boot of the ball joint and it's leaking its grease out. So the problem with that is you're gonna get water and sand and all sorts of corrosive material that's gonna get in there and eventually the ball joint will wear out. These ball joints from the factory, at least on the factory lemf order arms, they're gonna be a plastic encapsulated ball joint. So there is a plastic sleeve in there, but the ball joint itself is metal and it will wear over time. So um, you, know, you could check to see if there's any play in here. Uh, by putting a pry bar and pushing down on the arm. Uh, there's nothing there. Same thing with the thrust arm. Yeah, there's no side to side play on that at all. So, I mean, all these ball joints are obviously in really good shape on this car, uh, but uh, that cracked boot in the rear uh, would ne necessitate replacement at one point. Uh, like I said, sway bar links are another area that you could look at. Very similar to uh, the control arms. If there's any slop in these joints, you would feel the play in it. Actually, if you put your hand on it, you would be able to feel slop in the uh, ball joints themselves, which there isn't any. And the struts themselves, there's no leaking or anything like that. So they're probably still in good shape. Those are obviously a factory installed strut since so it has the label on it. Uh, realistically, 35 to 40,000 miles is the realistic life expectancy you're gonna get out of them. Uh, if you drive in a city with horrible road conditions, um, probably even less than that. Uh, but the number one way of telling if the struts have gone bad is if there's any kind of leaking external um, that you would find on the body of it. Uh, if there was like a, an oily film or a bunch of um, road debris residue, so like sand or anything like that, that's adhered to the outside, uh, that would be an indication that the uh, strut has started to leak. And that would be 
the dead giveaway that needs to be replaced. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the uh, rear suspension. I actually kept it a little bit light. There's actually more control arms in the rear, but they all kind of have the same wear problem over time. Uh, we have the M3 components, which again are popular upgrade options. And we have the standard control arms that come on the car from the factory if it's a non-M3. So this is gonna apply to X-Drive vehicles as well as your standard rear wheel drive vehicles. It is the exact same suspension in the rear of the car. There is no difference. One thing that you'll notice about the control arms is there is a significant material difference between uh, these two components. The M3 components are all aluminum with the exception of the trailing arm, but that's it, uh, which is the only thing that's shared between the M3 and the non-M cars. Your standard control arms are just stamped steel. Uh, so these are relatively weak. They can rust over time and they're also susceptible to bending. Another thing that's worth mentioning is these flex quite a bit under braking. So one of the performance upgrades here is the fact that the solid aluminum ones don't flex under braking and therefore help stabilize the car a little bit. But the problem's gonna be the same between both these arms. The bushings wear out or the ball joints wear out. You know, these would wear out just like any ball joint would and these solid rubber bushings would wear out like any rubber bushing would over time. So realistically speaking, 80,000 miles max on these components is realistically what you're gonna get. Um, another area of concern in the rear suspension is your shock, uh, along with your lower and upper shock mount components. Typically what I've seen on these cars is the rear shocks will leak quite substantially. Uh, the rears are actually pretty much the first thing to go. Uh, what makes the rear um, kind of different on the uh, E90 cars is the upper shock mount uh, it's just these bushings and they're pretty much sandwiched into the body. That's literally all that holds the shock in the rear, uh, which is fine because this is not load bearing. Uh, the spring seat is what's load bearing in the rear suspension. So this doesn't need to be that heavy duty. Uh, so these are the upper shock mounts and uh, this would be the lower shock mount used on the non M3s. Uh, these typically do not get replaced um, when the shocks are swapped out, but just like the upper shock mounts, the lower shock mount, which is gonna be on the rollover strut, that's what it's referred to. Uh, these should be replaced at the same time. So if you're replacing rear shocks, you wanna replace your bump stops, your upper and lower shock mounts all at the same time. But let's go into the rear of this car, take a look, and uh, we'll uh, point out some of the different components and what they do and some of the common trouble points you're gonna run across uh, if you're working on one of these cars. All right, so on the rear suspension of these cars, like I said, rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, they're exactly the same. Uh, it's actually a five link setup. So uh, BMW refers to this as a semi trailing arm design. This is your trailing arm right here. It just kind of helps locate the entire rear suspension. You have this lower rollover strut, which houses the spring and the lower shock mount, um, along with three upper control arms. So you got one here, a center link here, and your toe link all the way back here. So refer to this as a rollover strut and this is a uh, toe link right here. Uh, well, you can see our eccentric adjustments. So this right here is how you would adjust the rear wheel camber. Uh, and this is how you would adjust your rear toe. If you look, uh, these eccentric bolts are extremely uh, crusty. I wouldn't be shocked if this was seized. Uh, it's a common problem in the uh, Rust Belt states. So, up here in Connecticut, uh, it's not uncommon for these to be completely seized up inside the bushing in this arm. So uh, these arms will be entirely replaced strictly because of that right there. But um, you know, looking at these control arms, they're all original to the car, they've never been replaced. Um, you know, you'll typically get bushing wear on these after some period of time, but um, it seems, at least in, in my experience, that um, your most weak link in the rear suspension is gonna be this trailing arm right here. It's actually designed to buckle uh, in the event of a curb strike or something like that. Uh, so you'll see this little indentation on the uh, trailing arm itself. Uh, basically, if this were to be in some kind of impact, it would buckle here. Uh, these are extremely flimsy. They flex quite a bit, and this is gonna be one of the weak links in any of these rear suspensions. The control arms themselves, you know, like I said, the bushings do wear, the control arms themselves are relatively flimsy on the non-M3 models because everything is stamped steel. If we look at the shocks here, there is quite a bit of residue on the outside of the shock absorbers. So very, very likely that um, these shocks have been leaking for some period of time, even though they're not completely covered. Uh, it's the exact same thing on both sides. It looks like something has been dripping down 
at some point and it just sort of dried in place. But that's really common. Like I said, the rear shocks on these cars, uh, when they fail, they leak almost instantly. And I would say that the rear shocks compared to the front, the rear shocks are most likely to fail first. To look for play in the rear suspension is going to be the exact same thing. You'd want to give the wheel a shake. So uh, 12 uh, and six and nine and three, just to feel if there's any play in the wheel bearing or any of the joints. Um, you know, the only other things that I really want to look out for in the rear suspension is you have rubber subframe bushings that hold the subframe to the chassis of the vehicle. Uh, those can wear over time, but um, it's in my experience that they're often not replaced, even though they should be. Um, the advantage to this rear suspension is that it's extremely stable, so you don't really get bump steer or things like that. Um, and you also get a lot of adjustment ability to get proper toe and proper camber. Um, and also you don't get a lot of toe change or bump steer in the rear because of it. But the only problem with this design uh, with these cheaper factory components is they can bend pretty easily. They do wear out and it's just something to be aware of. Um, I, would, I wouldn't say any more than 80,000 miles on these rear components and that's if you're lucky. If you live in an area where the roads are in rough condition, uh, you'll probably be looking at replacement as low as 40,000 miles. And what we typically see is a lot of customers just upgrade to the M3 components uh, because they're solid aluminum and they're a little bit more robust they're really not that much more expensive. Uh, this rear uh, suspension design is actually standardized for uh, BMW. So um, on the F22 and F23 2 series, uh, F30, F31, F34 3 series, and even uh, the F32, F33, and F36 3 series, uh, even though those are the F chassis cars, and this is, you know, we're talking about E chassis cars in this, uh, those suspensions are very, very similar to this design. So they do suffer from the same type of problems. You know, it's a stair enough design that it's just worth talking about all these individual components and kind of what to look for when you own one of these cars. All right, so that's pretty much most of the uh, common issues that you're gonna run across on the uh, E90 chassis. Uh, you know, it's all fairly straightforward stuff. Uh, we have a whole series of kits on the website to address a lot of these common problems. So just enter your make model. You'll be able to find all, all that you need relatively uh, easily. Uh, you know, there are things that are going to wear out over time that are expected wear items and you just need to keep an eye out for those things so they don't come to uh, catch you at a surprise. So I hope you learned something from this video and, you know, if you own one of these cars or just recently picked one up, uh, we've been talking about these cars for some period of time now. We have a bunch of different videos uh, between DIY videos and other aspects of these cars. So we'll have a playlist linked down below. Go ahead and go, uh, feel free to check that out just in case you want to know more information. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, anything you'd like to uh, add that we didn't potentially touch on, go ahead and drop it in the comment box below. Definitely make sure to get back to you. Hit that like button. Also subscribe. We've got plenty more videos coming out on the United chassis, so uh, definitely want to be an eye out for that. And as always, I'll see you for the next one. Later.